I'm Annie, I'm based in Zurich, Switzerland, and I'm building a video game in Unity. It's gonna be a 2D arcade game, hopefully entertaining, but also challenging, minimalist art style and mobile friendly, so I can release it on the app stores. As you can see, the game is about sending all the trains to the right depots in the railway network and collecting points for that. In my last video, I went from a pretty ugly prototype to something much better looking, and in this devlog, I'll tackle another critical issue with my game. At currently three levels, it's a little bit short on content. And I've already figured out the solution to the problem. I'm just gonna build all the levels for the game. Easy. Also, maybe you will have a cool level idea while watching this video that I should really add to the game. Let me show you first what types of levels I'm building, and then I'll let you know how to send me your idea if you think it could work for the game. So a number that's been floating around my head is 30 levels. Wanna offer a variety of cool levels and a couple new gameplay mechanics over time, but I also don't want to bore players eventually because the game doesn't have anything new to offer. Anyway, let's get started. This shouldn't take too long, right? Okay, eight levels ready. This wasn't too hard. It'll be a breeze to make 30 levels. So let me show you some of these. This will be the very first level. By the way, I ditched my depot sprite for now since it was just a larger version of one of the train sprites and I'll create a proper depot sprite soon. Anyway, I don't want a tutorial at the beginning, so this level has to be self-explanatory, super basic, and it should teach the player the core game mechanic, which is to operate the railway switches. To make this more obvious and intuitive, like a bunch of people suggested, I recently added this pulsing circle to the railway switches, so it's clear you can tap to interact with them. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking right now. The pulsing is gonna get pretty annoying over time. Fear not! Being the advanced game designer I am, I have considered this, and I stopped the animation after the player has used the switch for the first time in each level. But enough babbling, let me do some more levels. Okay, I have done two more levels and I don't really feel like doing any more levels, so I think I'm done for the day. I'm of course an extremely productive early morning person, so it's now early morning. And I'm feeling refreshed and creative, so let's build more levels, only 20 to go. I've realized that prototyping the levels in Unity directly is pretty time consuming, especially when I experiment and don't have a specific idea yet. So I've switched to first creating freehand drawings of the levels, which takes a lot less time. One realization I've had while playtesting and most of the time failing very miserably at my own game is that it's frustrating to miss a train's turn to the matching depot right at the beginning, after the train spawned, and to then watch it move on to the wrong depot for a long time without being able to fix the mistake. So a pattern I want to adopt in some of the levels is to offer backup depots. In this level, I switched out the last depot and made it yellow, so if you missed the first turn, you still have a yellow backup option further along the track. However, I still want to reward when players manage to take the first correct turn, so you will earn more points for reaching these tricky depots than for the backup ones. So now that I have a bunch more levels ready, this is a good time to show you my upgraded train spawner. I want to keep the game interesting across levels, and part of this is what I'm doing right now, coming up with various different railway networks. 
But that's not gonna be enough, and I want to add some additional mechanics, one of them being a few different spawn scenarios for the trains. So for example, I can now spawn multiple trains on all available tracks at the same time. Or I can spawn multiple trains in close succession to each other on the same track. I can also specify a spawn probability for each of these spawn scenarios. So for example, we'll just spawn a single normal train in most cases, but occasionally we pick these multi-train scenarios to challenge the player and to shake things up a bit. I can also customize the probabilities for each level since this is a scriptable object that I attach to my train spawner. I'm pretty sure this will be necessary because the inherent difficulty of each railway network varies a lot already. So once I have a variety of levels ready, I think they should be a good inspiration for coming up with cool new mechanics that work well for the railway networks I have ready. Chestnuts are currently in season in Switzerland, so these should ensure my energy supply and keep my level building motivation up. Alright, I have only a bunch more levels left to build to reach my goal of 30 levels. Unfortunately, the weather in Zurich has been pretty grim, so I can't offer a scenic sunrise for today. But hey, the cranes are moving and there are Christmas trees at the top, so that's cool. Okay, I'm sure you're loving the cranes just as much as I do, but enough cranes for now. Time to do the remaining levels. Done! 30 levels. Let me show you the list. As you can see here, each level is just a simple and fairly small scene in Unity, and I load the in-game UI additively, just like a high-level scene manager that can load and unload scenes. That way I don't need to duplicate any generic game logic or components to every single level scene, which is much cleaner. Okay, so like I mentioned, if you want to send me a level idea to include in the game, just make a drawing like the ones I created as drafts. Then you can send it to me on Twitter, or you can upload the drawing to Imager and fill out the form I've linked down in the description. It can be on a piece of paper, on your phone, on your PC, just whatever works. And then if your idea is cool and feasible, I will include it in the game. So also make sure to let me know how to credit you in the game's about page which, of course, already exists. Just check the video description for all the details. Okay, what's next? I have a bunch of items on my to-do list, but what are your ideas for gameplay mechanics? Just leave a comment and let me know. <laughs> 